Hey, Mr. Martinez. For my end of the year project, I am arguing if the de if the death penalty is an ethical punishment for serious crimes or if it isn't. So the main reasons why I believe that the death penalty is an ethical punishment for serious crimes is because first, it keeps dangerous and violent criminals off the streets. Second, it provides closure to the victims who had to endure the high the highest crimes. Third, it deters the influence of crime, and four, it abides by it ab it abides by the social by the ethical concepts of the social contract and utilitarianism. So first, going off my first point is that it keeps violent criminals off the streets. So first, an example of that. So if if criminals aren't let out, they do not have the opportunity to commit the same crimes again. So 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 an example is is Kenneth McDuff. Kenneth McDuff was an American serial killer who had a really troubled childhood. He he got into drugs. He had tw like twelve counts of burglary. Like not even as an adult, he was charged like forty eight years in prison. But his first convicted murder was Robert Brandt, and with the severity uh, of the circumstances, he was sentenced to death. But unfortunately, just a couple years later, overcrowding was a was a big issue in Texas. Like they let a ton of people out that they shouldn't have. But Kenneth McDuff was one that reoffended. So they let Kenneth McDuff out on parole because they couldn't hold him. I mean, there was nowhere to put him. So since they let him out, everything went downhill for for McDuff. He he got into drugs. He became an alcoholic, and he reoffended and murdered a woman at a at a road stop. Slashed her throat, raped her, and kidnapped her, and tried to discard her body, but was later found out and caught by the police and sentenced to death. So my second reason is that it provides closure for the people that had to endure the heinous crimes. So, so my example of this was Julie Heath. So Julie Heath was a American who was brutally murdered by her boyfriend. So her boyfriend had had driven her into the woods had slashed her throat, raped her, killed her, and discarded her body near a river. But days later, he, a hunter found Julie's body and, and, and reported it to the authorities. So, so, the, so the authorities got, got in contact with the body. They, they ran the scans and everything, and the DNA test came back positive for Julie's boyfriend. So they convicted him of murder, and he was sentenced to death. But... Years after his death and after he was sentenced to death, Julie's best friend, like lifelong best friend, feels comfort in talking about her. She feels safe that she won't get raped. She won't get killed. No one else will get raped or killed by that same person. And yeah. And also going on to my third reason is that it deters the influence of crime. So there are two different types of, uh, of, de of deterrence. So there's specific deterrence. There's and, and there's also general deterrence. So... Let's go off general deterrence first. General deterrence is the idea of that like, oh, the government will will come up with crazy and vicious punishments for crimes. So for, so for example, like we have the death penalty, which in most cases, like if people thought about committing like a very serious crime, like, like murder, rape, treason, arson, large drug trafficking, they would most likely think it another time, knowing that one of the consequences could be the death penalty. So that makes them less inclined to do that, and that's kind of how how like how law works. So if there's laws in place that can get people in jail, have them to pay fines, have them serve community service hours, have they go on their permanent record, they would most likely be less inclined to do that because because some of that stuff can can really ruin your life. And then specific deterrence is where is the idea of deterrence that is supposed to stop criminals from reoffending and going back to prison. And my last step is how the social contract and utilitarianism backs the use of the death penalty. So go going first off is off the social contract. So the idea of the social contract is that a person enters, let's say, a government and they give and they forfeit some of their individual rights to the government, but in return they get government protection so like police military they have access to like health services all those other things to have them safe and healthy so they have that and if that involves having to execute 
violent, violent and dangerous criminals, then yes, that does back the use of the death penalty if it keeps the population safe. And going off utilitarianism. Utilitarianism is the ethical concept of where they make the best decisions based off the best outcomes that they can. So, like, for example, um, if a crazy serial killer was murdered, well, a crazy serial killer murdered someone and they executed that person, the outcome of that would be there wouldn't be an, a serial killer in society. They, they, they wouldn't have a chance to go back out and hurt other people again. People would feel safe. People wouldn't have to worry or, or keep or keep an eye open when they sleep. I mean, everything would be fine. But my personal opinion opinion on this is that like when someone takes the life of someone else, they automatically give up their their right to live based off how ruthless they were and took another person's life, and that life can never be returned back. And basically, in conclusion, the reason I think that the death penalty is ethical is because. It keeps crazy criminals off the streets. It, it it provides closure to the people who had to endure those crimes, and deters the influence of dangerous crimes like murder, or rape, and lastly, it all ties in and is backed by the ethical concepts of the social contract and utilitarianism. Thank you.